What's up YouTube? So I've got another job in the garage and it's potentially a large one. Uh, something I don't normally work on. It's a BMW 323i. Uh, it's got a 2.5 in line 6. The owner of the car uh, believes it needs a head gasket. Uh, so I've kind of dealt with this kind of thing in the over the summer on a Mazda and I checked that car out and it didn't end up needing a head gasket and I explained that to the, this owner I am I do want to check out the car before I take it all apart um, because you never know it could be something else now he, he explained to me that they've tried a few things they did swap like uh, ignition coils and uh, I, I believe a compression test led them to think it was a head gasket issue and I guess more or less the reason it's here is because no one else in town wants to do it. All the shops have turned it away and uh, I kind of said to him a while back that I would do it. He's a really nice guy and I've been putting him off long enough and now that I got some heat in my garage <laughs> I decided that I would this was a good time to actually take on the, the job so uh, first I'm just gonna hook up my little uh, scan tool and do a code read see what's in there for codes apparently it's cylinder number four is the problem uh, so I just want to see if any other codes are in there that might lead me off into a different direction for diagnosis but we'll probably get down to a compression test and uh, more than likely a leak down test um, so yeah we'll just slowly walk through it and diagnose the problem and see how big of a job this is going to become and as you can see it's a frosty day out today uh, woke up and it was you know below zero and even though the sun's out it's still quite chill nice and warm in here though so like I said we're gonna start with uh, a code read and the OBD2 connectors just behind this little panel you can pop it off and there's the connector there and this scanner's coming on we're gonna have to at least get the ignition on and we'll see if we can just go right into uh, scan BMW the car certainly misfires I mean it, it it's got a completely dead cylinder right from startup uh, you can't really feel it as much at you know 2,000, 2,500 RPM, but uh, you know being a BMW engine, it's it smooths out quite a bit. We're gonna go to read DTC. Combustion misfire, cylinder number four. Variable intake system. Combustion misfire, cylinder number six. Several cylinders misfire. Misfire at low tank fill level. Valvetronic thermal overload protection warning threshold. Combustion misfire cylinder number one. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> uh, so, usually in this scenario, I'll clear all the codes and I'll run the vehicle till at least codes one code for me. Um, I've definitely got a little bit of homework that I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do about reading about some of those codes. But uh, I think what we're going to do is clear the codes. I'll run the car for a short bit, see if I can get it to recode. It should recode rather quickly because that's, that cylinder miss is quite heavy. I just want to be sure it's number four that I start trying to diagnose. I'll clear all the fault memory. Yes. Okay. We'll go back to read. There's no TTC set anymore. So they're all cleared. And I'm, I'm going to... Uh, gonna have to open up the garage door a bit turn my heat off and uh, run the car and just see if number four will actually recode or if it it may be another cylinder just to be sure of what's happening and at the same time I'm also going to check the coolant level just to make sure there is coolant in there so I've got to start it off it is running you can probably hear the misfire in it the coolant level doesn't look too too bad And now we'll just see if it uh, actually sets codes.
Okay, so just within a couple minutes of the car running, number, cylinder number four did set for a misfire again. No other codes did set. Uh, so I, I would consider that cylinder number four is causing enough problems, having zero power, uh, that it may be causing other sensors to, you know, read faulty. So I'm going to get to the point, I think I'm going to uh, at least pull the top off here and get down to the spark plugs, pull them out, and possibly start with a compression test unless I see something else going on. Okay, so these are the two plugs I pulled out. This was number one, this was number four, and you can see number one plug has definitely been lighting off, but this number four had a lot of oil on it, and I don't know if it's from someone doing a wet test when they were doing a compression test, or if there's some other problem that's related to the oil being on the plug, but it looks like it's I mean, it looks like it was lighting off at some point, so I don't know if someone's already swapped it from another cylinder or not. But what I'm going to do is take the coil and plug from number four and swap it with the number one and uh, run the car and see if I can get that misfire to recode on, a, on number one cylinder. And if not, then I'm going to concentrate on number four. Okay, so I got the plug and coil swapped from number four cylinder to number one cylinder and I ran the engine, it it ended up coding number uh, four cylinder again and I was actually able to do like a load load kind of power output test on number one, two and four, I just compared all three number one and two are very close, number four is completely off the chart next I'm just gonna go straight for a compression test on number four cylinder, I'm gonna pull all the plugs out and but I'm gonna go straight to number four just to see what kind of compression it's actually making. If it seems a little kind of normal then I'll probably compare it to another cylinder and if not then I'll most likely go straight for a leak down test.
So in that last clip, you might have seen that I did the compression test on number four, and it failed horribly. It was absolute zero. Needle didn't even budge. So I did my comparison test. I put it on number one just to see what number one would produce, right up to pretty much probably what spec is. I think it was 170 or 175. Uh, so right now I'm just going to move right down, right onto my leak down test. So I've got my leak down gauge out, and I'll put it in number four. And I'll get ready to turn the crank and get it so that that number four cylinder comes to top dead center and see what kind of leak down I have. And then hopefully I can, I'm, uh, hopefully I can determine where it's coming from. Okay, so I'll just drop this hose down into number four cylinder and thread it in place. And I've got my uh, gauge and regulator set for doing leak downs. So I'll hook that up to the line. Just applying a little bit of pressure because I already know I have uh, zero compression under the cylinder, so there's a major problem of some kind. And I'm going to assume that we're there. And it looks like leak down to like 90. <laughs> Because there you can see it just starts to drop off just a bit. So it's a it's a it's a major major leak. Hard for me to accept that there's zero compression in this cylinder, and uh, this car only has I think it's not even like maybe 120 maybe 120 thousand kilometers. So it's just you know like. I don't know, 65, 70,000 miles. Not a lot of mileage. And the, th the thing runs like absolutely awesome other than that one dead cylinder. And I mean, it's, it's a dead whole cylinder. There's no power being produced from it. And when I, when I, when I took my uh, camera and I started looking down into it, it looks like a lot of fuel's been washing it out. And I just watched, uh, I watched a video and it was a, it looked like a technician in a shop describing these these engines coming in lower mileage and he tested this one it basically had zero PSI and he used uh, an AC Delco product called what we used to call cleans uh, but obviously they've rebranded it and given a different name it's just like a fuel injector intake service kind of cleaner and they poured about an ounce of it in the cylinder and let it sit overnight and the, what he describes is basically the, the piston rings getting stuck in the lands of the piston and, and not sealing up the cylinder uh, to the point where there's zero PSI. I, I mean, I that's like grasping, I think. But is it a possibility? I mean, I've seen some really weird stuff, so it's something I'm going to have to try. Uh, so I have some intake throttle body and intake air cleaner which breaks up carbon really well when you let it sit there for a long time and I'm basically gonna put it in number four I'm gonna hose number four cylinder with it I'm gonna let it sit overnight and uh, probably take the air and try and blow a lot of it out and and uh, I'll put all the plugs back in tomorrow and fire it up after I get home from work tomorrow and then I, I just want to see if the if there's any improvement in the way it runs, and uh, whether there is or not, I, I'll I'll pull the plugs and I'll do another compression test on number four to see if it came up any, and if it does, then uh, we're on to something. And I, I don't want to have to pull a cylinder head if I don't have to, and uh, the way that it looks at right now, I'm going to have to. But I'll try this trick first, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. So it is the following day after work. Uh, I'm going to try and blow out number four cylinder, all the all the throttle cleaner that I put down in that cylinder. I'm going to put all the plugs back in, all the coils back in, and basically 
while it's still cold, I'm going to open the door, run the car to see if it actually, you know, starts to build compression and actually run that cylinder. Uh, that may take a little bit of time, so I'm going to let it idle outside for a little bit, or at least with the door open. And uh, if it starts to improve, um, I may let, let, let it run a little bit longer to the point that I'll pull the car back in. I'm going to pull the plugs and I'll, pull a, I'll do a compression test on that cylinder to see if pressure is actually coming up. If it's improving, then I'm on to something. If it doesn't and it still holds zero, still has a heavy misfire, then we've got to take this to the next level and probably end up pulling the cylinder head. So I went ahead and I put all the plugs back in, uh, put all the coils back in, put the car halfway outside, ran it. It did not improve at all. It just kept on running horrible. That cylinder kept on missing hard. Uh, and I waited a little while. So I pulled it back in, let it cool just a tiny bit. I pulled number four spark plug back out. I did another leak town test on number four and and I mean it's it's leaking beyond 90% I, I can't I can't hear which direction the airflow is going I don't feel anything at the tailpipe but it, I hear something at the exhaust manifold I've got the cap off I don't feel any airflow out of there there's nothing coming out of the coolant I don't hear anything coming out of the intake but there's zero psi out of that cylinder so and I, I'm thinking at this point Probably I'm going to want to remove the valve cover, but I'm going to have to save further diagnosis for another time. Uh, the video's dragged on a little bit, and I expected to find something by now. So I should have another video up in a couple days, uh, basically continuing on with either diagnosis or you know giving him a few options to see what he wants to go ahead and, and do. And uh, so whether you know, I tear further into it and actually get to the point where I'm, I know what I need for a repair or just finding a problem to identify it. Uh, that's going to have to be the next video. But if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.